Well, good evening. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad that you're joining us here tonight on Atlanta Live. I'm one of your hosts. I'm James Howard. And I'm Regina Howard, and God is so good. And we're a part of uh, Assigned Voice Ministries, and we're here tonight to lift up the name of Jesus because there are so many that have so many wonderful things that they could say about him. And God has placed so many wonderful things in our hands to share with others. Amen. We want you to have everyone get around the television set, as we always say, no matter where they're at. Call somebody, tweet somebody, Facebook them, let them know that we're on the air. You can follow us here on Twitter at, at Atlanta Live 57. You can also follow us on Facebook as well, Atlanta Live 57, and we will be more than happy to just acknowledge that you're with us and that you're sharing your time with us this evening. Amen. I know you're on Twitter and I know you're on Facebook, so let everybody know that Camise Lee is coming to the music set and she's going to be singing Just Let Go. Just let go. Oh, oh. 
Amen. <laughs> Just let go. Just let go. Whatever you have yeah. right now that might be weighing you down, all I can say to you is just let it go. Amen. It doesn't, just, it doesn't help to hold it. Yeah. Just let it go. I know that's let right. Let it roll off like <laughs> water rolls off a duck's back. No Amen. sense in hanging on to it. Amen. Amen. Our, our first guest is going to help you with that. She's going to help you get back up and trust in God when life knocks you down. She has an amazing testimony. Yes. And I believe that God is going to speak to somebody right now. Please join us in welcoming Cheryl Giesbrecht to Atlanta Live. Wow. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. Amen. Glad Thank to you. Hear. It's my joy to be with you. Amen. We're glad that you, you were able to make it and, and that you're able to come and share with us and, and, and those that are watching what God has done for you. So talk to us a little bit and tell us who you are and how Get Back Up came to be. Well, it started a long time ago, actually, when I was a rebellious teenager. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. I knew a lot about God, but I did not put it to use because I was a church kid and actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I probably knew too much of God's <laughs> word. Um, too mu I had a lot of head knowledge, but none was in my heart mm -hmm. and allowed the enemy to lie to me for years. At age 13, started getting into drugs and alcohol and became a full-on drug addict by age 13. Wow. For four years, my life was in going the wrong direction and looking for love in all those wrong places. Mm -hmm. And then God in his providence allowed me to go to a Christian camp. I thought I had a summer job. My parents had pulled some strings and there's when I found out about how much God loved me because it was through the camp staff there that I was in, I received the word mm -hmm. they didn't pound me over the head with the bible like had been done before mm -hmm. but they spoke god's word over my life i didn't realize that it was god's word but they said a phrase over me that was love covers a multitude of sins mm -hmm. excuse me and when um, you hear god's word over and over again mm -hmm. i began to believe that god's love could cover a multitude of my sins mm -hmm. and so at age 17 i submitted my life to the lord and god in his providence blessed me, covered my sins, and allowed me to continue on. And mar I married a pastor some years later, but still didn't believe that God had covered my sins. I dealt with a lot of guilt and shame throughout mm -hmm. my early um, pastor's wife years, as well as as a young mom. And I couldn't get rid of those things that I wish I wouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. You know how you want to go back and, and rewind the tapes? or you want to erase some of those things that you got into. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out how to do that. I, wouldn't, I couldn't receive that forgiveness that God had given me graciously, mm -hmm. but yet I couldn't forgive myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I began to understand more about identity in Christ. And what that means is that circumstances mm -hmm. allow us to face more of those things that are difficult. Right. So as a young pastor's wife, I began to believe and allow God to heal me from some of the things that I'd done as a young teenager. But then um, the identity in Christ thing was a huge, huge thing for me to, to understand and stand firm on the promises of God. But beginning with the love covers a multitude of sins, that phrase, mm -hmm. it was shared from God's word, 1 Peter 4.8. Mm -hmm. So that became my life first, my promise to stand on. But then throughout the different difficulties and challenges that happen in churches. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe you don't have that here. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> God allowed our, our family to go through different things in churches. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of those situations was when my husband was fired from a pastoral position. Mm -hmm. He had no sin in his ministry. He did nothing wrong. But he was moved on. We were moved on for different reasons. Okay. But God allowed me to experience the fullness of his forgiveness when I had to forgive the different people right. that had decided mm -hmm. that Paul had to move on. Mm -hmm. And that was very difficult. 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And I began to believe that was true for me in forgiving people. Mm -hmm. I had a hard time forgiving people when my husband was without a job and I was the sole supporter of our family as a pastor's wow. wife with a part-time job that I didn't like and didn't want. Mm -hmm. And then later on in my life, God allowed me to go through cancer. Wow. And some of your um, 
listening and viewing audience probably know what cancer is about. We have, many of us have experienced it in our families. Some of us never hope or wish that we would go through it ourselves. Right. But I experienced, I found a lump one day and went through a lot of different tests and was told that I had stage four cancer. Wow. It was in my bone marrow. Oh, wow. God allowed me to experience more of his grace and mercy mm -hmm. as I chose every day to have an attitude where I would trust him Amen. with my trials and Amen. my difficulties. Although some days I didn't feel like it. Amen. Right. I knew that I couldn't take a vacation from God. Right. Amen. Right. I knew that I had to choose him in spite of some of the other things ways that I dealt with my adversity in the past. I, you know, tried to run away or I wouldn't um, allow God to, to do what he, mm -hmm. only he can do. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord. He, in his favor, yes. did heal me mm -hmm. yes. Amen. of stage four cancer. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's a, that's a blessing. Oh my God, that's a blessing. And, that, and, and I'm sure that is touching someone's life right now that actually may be watching and, and battling, maybe not cancer, but something else. Mm -hmm. But God is a healer. Mm. He is, He's and His healer. word heals us too. Yes. One of my friends left a voicemail on my answering machine, and it was from Psalm 73, and mm -hmm. it says, My body and my mind may grow weak, mm -hmm. but He is my strength, all I ever need. Mm -hmm. And I left that voicemail on my answering machine for years. Wow. I actually. Um, my, my, you know, m most of us don't even have answering machines right. nowadays, but <laughs> I had it on there for quite a while, even after the cancer scene was, was complete, mm -hmm. because I, I was so encouraged by hearing my friend mm -hmm. say that. He knew what that was about. His wife had um, a brain tumor. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> God's word, if we know his word, and we, we speak it into our lives. We mm -hmm. speak it over ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. It changes the yes. way we view our problems. Yes. And that's what Get Back Up is about. Amen. It's about Amen. choosing to hold on to God's hand. Because Psalm 145 says, God gives a hand to those who are down on their luck. Yes. He helps us up mm -hmm. when we've fallen down. Mm -hmm. But it's a choice that all of us make. It is. It it's is. all about our choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and we, we mm -hmm. need to make the right ones. Do you think with your cancer and what you were going through that uh, there was just something a little bit more that God wanted to get out of you? I do. Yeah. He wanted me to learn a lot of lessons. My lessons could not have been learned any other way. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer was that I would learn the lessons of lymphoma. That's mm -hmm. the type of cancer I had, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. And some of you know, you probably understand it's about, it's a, a blood cancer like uh, leukemia mm -hmm. and um, I knew as a control freak yeah that's right I'm a control freak I like to know <laughs> what I'm doing every day and so with all the doctor's appointments and the different things that were happening mm -hmm. I was told to go to this test or be at this appointment and I felt very out of control right. also that a disease had come and mm -hmm. invaded my body and where did that come from there's no cancer in my family but when I began to pray, as, as I knew that God had some lessons for me to learn, I said, God, teach me the lessons of lymphoma. Whatever those are, I want that. And he showed me a lot about resting in him. Mm -hmm. He showed me that he's in control of my schedule. Mm -hmm. He's also in control of the many people that I met, mm -hmm. cancer survivors. I was able to share the Lord with people in doctor's offices during chemotherapy and also just trust him with the different things. He also showed me that my life is his, and yes. when he did heal me, it's his life that he's given back to me. Mm -hmm. Psalm 90, 12 is a prayer of Moses. It says, teach me to number my days mm -hmm. that I might present to you a heart of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that has been my prayer, that I would use this life, which is not mine anymore. Well, it never has been, has it? No. It but I think that was the shocking reality during right, the cancer right. was that this isn't my life. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm out of control. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk more about your new book, Get Back Up, and some of the things that God has actually elevated you from in your life. Yeah. Right now, we're going to take you back to the music set, and uh, Commissy Lee is singing Long to Praise. <laughs>
goodness that you've done for me and how you brought me out. I lift my hands. My Amen. Amen. Camise Lee singing Long to Praise. Amen. Which is a beautiful song. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, we're here. We're talking with one of our guests. And uh, Cheryl Giesbright has been talking about her new book. And mm -hmm. the new book is entitled um, Get Back Get Up. Get Back Up. Mm -hmm. Get Back, Get back Up. up. Trust what in God when life knocks you down. One of the things that we were talking about before the break I wanted to find out more about is that not just with the cancer, once you got through with the cancer, you were dealing with other things in your life. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, all of us have different trials, and some of the mm -hmm. things that happen are things that we wouldn't invite into our home, but <laughs> with all the technology available, there are opportunities for people to go places on the internet that they shouldn't go. Right. Amen. And my husband had gotten involved with some internet pornography. Mm -hmm. And I know some of your viewing audience probably do struggle with that. And it's a very mm -hmm. real problem in our society today. Yes. And my husband and I dealt with this for a very long time, but he became honest with himself. And I think that is really a key in any difficulty, whether it be depression, despair, discouragement, if it's struggling with weight problems or any type of addiction or anything, really, um, whether it's done to us or we do it to ourselves, mm -hmm. we have to get really honest with ourselves mm -hmm. and with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when Paul and I decided to fight this together, we were on a level playing field as a couple. And there are lots of resources out there. And I talk about some of those in the book but it's wonderful when a Christian man wants to surrender mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. type of uh, addiction yeah. to God. Mm -hmm. And I know there are many people that are not honest with themselves and they can't trust themselves, but they're not willing to say that. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that my husband, my late husband, Paul, was Amen. one. Mm. Well, God sees all, knows all. So why can't we go to him for Amen. direction, for healing, for deliverance? Amen. With, it, with anything that we go through, because he knows us better than we know ourselves. Yes. You know? Um, you said that your, your, your late husband, that took you back as well. That was one of the most difficult things I've dealt with in the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, my husband was my best friend, my ministry coach. We were partners in ministry. We um, did everything together. In fact, our plans for our future were really falling into place. And then um, he was actually visiting me. I had done a women's event at a nearby retreat center, 
about 45 minutes in, from our home. It was, I had dri driven my car up for the day and my husband was an avid motorcyclist, drove his motorcycle up to visit me after the retreat was over and we were fellowshipping, walking around the retreat center. He was, he's always been involved in men's ministries and we had made some plans to bring some groups back. And um, we had had a wonderful time. The last two hours, little did I know it was his time. Mm. You know, Ecclesiastes says each of us has an appointed mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And I see looking back now that God had prepared me for losing my beloved Paul. Mm -hmm but it is nothing that I would ever wish for anyone um, to happen. As we, I got in my car and Paul was actually on his motorcycle in back of me, he pulled out around me and he went around a corner and that was the last I saw him. Oh. I actually found him, <coughs> excuse me, less than five minutes later I, I was driving by, I th he should have been right in front of me on the road and mm -hmm. I turned and I saw his bike over on its side and I said where'd Paul to myself where'd Paul go and I saw him over on the other side of the fence face down and so I found him and there are many things that happen when he um, was leaving this earth um, I just could not believe that it was his time mm -hmm. and as I prayed for God to heal him I knew that God had healed him completely and it was the day that he got to see our Lord mm -hmm. So as a widow, um, I was, it was several years ago and tried to figure out, make some sense, but that was another opportunity for me to say, Lord, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not that I was fighting God's will because many of us know that there are things like that that you cannot fight mm -hmm. because you, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yes. But as I sorted it out um, financially, spiritually, what do I do now type of thing. I went to the Lord again and I said, okay, Lord, how are you and I going to do this mm -hmm. together? And God has become a very real husband to me. Mm -hmm. There's a verse in Isaiah that says that he sees the widow, mm -hmm. he sees the orphan. And I, I tell him, remember, Lord, I'm your favorite widow mm -hmm. <laughs> and my children are orphans. Mm -hmm. So be a father to my children. They're adults now, they're both married. But still, it's where's Paul at the mm -hmm. at the Christmas um, gift opening? You know, he should be there. And so, but I know that the rest of that scripture talks about that God is delivering me from the disappointment. It says reproach in one of the versions, but the disappointment of my widowhood, mm -hmm. and He's rebuilding my life, helping me to get back up. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why I knew that this book needed to be written because I know there are many people who are grieving. Yes. the loss of a loved one. Yes. This shouldn't have happened. How could God allow this to mm -hmm. happen? Mm -hmm. And all I can say to you is that God knows your pain. He mm -hmm. sees your grief. Your tears are precious to him. Let your tears flow. Tears are a gift and allow God to heal you only the way that God can. And that comes through spending time in his word, through spending time with the saints. Mm -hmm. There's yes. a lot of different support groups as in the many other issues that we have. Mm -hmm. Grief Share is a wonderful support group, and also there's a lot of different resources mm -hmm. that we can choose that or our own methods of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were days that I didn't want to deal with my, my grief, mm. but I chose to continue on worshiping the Lord with our wonderful Christian music that we have. I love Christian music, so I'd take my Bible and I'd crank up the music and I'd just read out loud and say, Lord, you've got to enter into this thing because I need you so much. Yeah. And when we ask him to enter in, that's when he comes. Yes, yeah. yes. When we choose him mm -hmm. above our own methods of dealing with mm -hmm. our pain, he always meets us. Well, you know, I thank God because he's given you what you need to minister even to yourself. Mm. Praise the Lord. You know, even in, in your times, you know, that, that um, the things that came that would, might typically knock someone down, but God has given you your own internal support. He's given you your own internal encouragement system. And I'm listening to you and to hear you build yourself up is amazing. So I can only imagine what this will do for the person that reads it. Thank you. You know, and, and, and we really thank you for sharing it because sometimes it's hard 
to share some of those things that knock us down in life. But because God gave you a uh, bounceability. <laughs> 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 you know, they used to say weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. And what we do is we may bounce, but we come right back, and it's just amazing how God can give us peace. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't you believe that everything that we go through is God's is for God's glory? Yeah, it is. And it you've probably heard is. that. It's my story for God's glory. Yeah. I yeah. totally believe that. Yeah, and all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. We need to find out more about your book. Um, is there a website information that people can contact you yes. to find out more about you? What is that? From Ashes to Beauty. It's F-R-O-M, Ashes to, T-O, Beauty, dot com. Dot com. That's my website. Okay. So they can find out about the book. They can find out about you. They want you to come and share in ministry. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, you've, you've actually uh, blessed us. Bless me and my wife with, with just your testimony, mm -hmm. knowing that God is still on the throne, still doing what he does, that only he can do. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and we thank you so much. Coming all the way from California, California. to join us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you. Amen. We're grateful. Thank you for being here. Uh, don't forget to look up, get back up, when uh, trust in God when life knocks you down. We're going to help you with that because our prayer counselors are waiting. So we're gonna take you to the heartbeat of Atlanta Live to the prayer room. Good evening. My name is Jackie Lance from the Love Center where my anointed pastor is Pastor Byron L. Broussard. I'm standing here in TV 57 prayer room where we have anointed prayer warriors who are just waiting to pray with you. Remember, whatever your situation is, there's nothing too hard for God. Just call us here at TV 57. That number is 770-300-9828. Whatever your situation may be, there's nothing too hard for God. And for those of you who need salvation, do remember, Romans 10, 9, and 10 reads, If thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if you just stop right where you are and pray this simple prayer with me, Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me, and God has raised Jesus from the dead. I want to turn from my sins, Jesus, come into my heart, and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Know that if you've prayed that simple prayer with me that you are saved. Call us here at TV 57 so we can celebrate your new beginning in God. A number that number again that number is 770-300-9828. And now back to the studio. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. The number at the bottom of the screen is a number to call. 770-300-9828. Our prayer partners are waiting for you to call. Whatever you need, whatever you're going through, they're there right now waiting for you. And um, I was blessed by our last guest. Amen. And Beautiful our, testimony. Our next Amen. guest is, uh, is going to bring you to a whole different level. Mm -hmm. So bring the young folks around. Please get them. Run <laughs> and he, get them. He's, a, he's a, a young man of God. And I can actually say that. And he's going to talk to us about what God is doing in his life. Are the street lights on? Yeah. <laughs> if the street lights are on, they need to be in the house anyway. So call them and tell them to come in and hear what this young man right. has to say. It's, 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 it's really an honor and a pleasure for me to introduce this young man. He's a, a director. Uh, he's the president of 2020 Visions Entertainment Group, a motion picture production company that has three motion pictures in the pipeline. And in 2010, uh, he directed uh, his first film entitled Iniquity. Um, it's supposed to be on the shelves coming up very soon. Please <laughs> welcome to the show, director, man of God, Joshua Cates. Amen. Coates, excuse me. Coates, the coat, Coates. Coates. Amen. Coates. Amen. Sue Coates. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I am. 
<laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here, too. It's just, a, I just love the joy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that you, you just, just the laughter yeah. that comes, and it's a laugh that denotes <laughs> God has done it again, right. everybody. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, we're, we're glad to have you here, Brother Joshua. Yes. Holding my yes, copy. Yes, you are. And yes, I am. First one to have it. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> we, we want you to talk to us about yeah. who you are and how iniquity came about. I'm, I'm sure there's a... It's a story. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's a story. Uh, my name is Director Joshua Coates. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Philadelphia. Right. Um, real short, my father was in entertainment. He had a, a, a hit group in the, uh, the 60s and 70s. That creativity was, uh, I took from that, I guess it was passed down from me, uh, to me. Um, You're not going to tell us the group? Uh, so that, You're not going to tell us the group, huh? They, they okay. the, the group is, uh, their name is Brenda and the Tabulations. Okay. They had uh, several hits on a Billboard music chart toward the war uh, world with uh, the Temptations and the Jackson 5. I was about to say, that yeah. sounds like a group that right, right, right. Tabulations. Yeah, yeah, tabulations. All right now. <laughs> so, um, that creativity that he had, I, I believe it was passed down to me. Mm -hmm. uh, he, when I was five years old, he snuck me into the movies. And uh, I won't mention the movie because I right, may right, call, right. Him, call him police. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he snuck me in the movies and I seen this movie and this movie changed my life in, in some strange way. Uh, we, I, we would see it every week. He would pick me up uh, and he said, what you want to do? So I want to go see that movie. 13 weeks I went straight. I gravitated to movies. Uh, I wanted to be a part of that world in some kind of way. I just like to, I started studying the director, the director of the film, and I just wanted to have that same uh, technique where I can change someone's life. Give me 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. You sit down and watch my film for 90 minutes. I want to be able to change their life through cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, so I gravitated to that. I went to high school. I had I have wonderful uh, uh, spiritual parents, Bishop Henry Cobb and uh, Elaine Cobb from Philadelphia. They took me in their church. Um, and they really convinced my parents to put me into a performing arts school. I went to a performing arts school. Um, I did some college, uh, and the Lord opened doors where I, w I was able to inter uh, intern with a lot of celebrities and some uh, powerful uh, movie uh, producers. I networked for so many years, and eventually I said, you know what, I want to do this film. Mm -hmm. And iniquity stuck out to me. Um, a lot of Hollywood would never admit this, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of films that are influenced by the Bible. Mm -hmm. A lot of films. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some of your most successful films, and the Bible had somewhere, somewhere along the line, the Bible influenced that director or writer or producer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the Bible has so many wonderful stories that are very relevant to today's society. And the story of iniquity, David and Bathsheba, mm -hmm. um, very relevant in our society about adultery, about uh, deception, about uh, coveting someone else's uh, property or wife, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and being uh, trustworthy with your, your friends. And that movie, I mean, the story really uh, connects with society, even in our churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's going on in our church community, worldwide, uh, political arenas, um, families. Um, relationships, mm -hmm. iniquity d deals with that. The story of David and Bathsheba is very relevant. So I wanted to make a modern day story of that. Uh, and there's some, some twists and turns in there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's about choices. And, uh, and I, I highlight that when we talked earlier right. about choices, about if I make a choice, and especially if it's a selfish choice, do I realize how many people it may hurt? It can hurt my family, it can hurt my kids, it can hurt my career, my job, and everything. So iniquity really covers uh, a majority of those topics. Mm. Wow. Mm. So I, I want to know. <laughs> See? For real. I'm going because I'm going to watch it. Yes, yes. And but listen, what? you better be careful. Don't walk outside with that because <laughs> it's a reserve list. Lord, if people see you with that. <laughs> so what, what I want to know is you were just sitting there. No. And, and the Lord <clears throat> gave it to you. How did it transpire? Oh, you're trying to dig deep, Regina. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because somebody out there is watching and has the passion, mm -hmm. but they're just like, I don't, I don't have any money. I oh, can't. no, it's but never it's about not, money. It's never about money. Do you see? I wanted you to go there. Because Listen, when I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. Sorry to cut mm -hmm. you off. It's oh, no. one thing. And this is what I believe. If you do not follow your dreams, mm -hmm. you're going to be working for somebody who did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, that's, and that's what I go by. It's never about money. Mm -hmm. If God has given you a gift, He's going. 
Ooh. If God is, is, if God has given you a gift, come on, and that gift is confirmed. I'm not talking about you just woke up. You think you can sing or act or whatever. Right. I'm talking about no, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's I good think right I right right can. Uh, we're not talking shower That's acting right and if, shower singing. If God gave you a gift, the Bible says make full proof of your ministry. Paul said full this. Proof. Paul yes. said this. He said make full proof of your ministry. Also, the Bible says despise not small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a gift, mm -hmm. if you master, even, all right, we're talking about film. Wow. We're talking about film. Wow. Okay? Wow. If I'm on the set at Atlanta Live with you, mm -hmm. and I, my job is to get you coffee. You better okay? make a good cup. I, I'm going I'm to do the best. I'm going to mm -hmm. be the best coffee wow. deliverer to you. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? Because when it's time for promotion, mm -hmm. who are you going to look for? The one that made the best The coffee. best cup of coffee. So I tell everybody that no matter what position you are in life, no mm -hmm. matter what you want to do, master it. Become the best at it. Be ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta you gotta break from that pack. Cause everybody's trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You gotta find a way to break from that pack. And if it's serving you coffee, I'm gonna be the best mm -hmm. coffee server to you. Because I know when it's time for promotion, because God every, God gives everybody one opportunity. If it's one opportunity, he gives you one opportunity. Some some people are fortunate to have two or three, mm -hmm. but God is going to give you one opportunity, and you always practice before the opportunity. You never practice on the opportunity. Mm. Wow. So that's what I tell people. Yeah, you wow. don't practice See. on the opportunity wow. before. You practice before. Wow. Because the Lord is going to give you that chance. That's be, good. Be that's ye good. ready. That's right. That's, that's right. And you wow. got to make full proof of it. So that's what I tell a lot of kids. Do not be discouraged. Uh, just if, 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 if it's a, a small project that you're working on, if two people show up, thank God for the two, two people. people. Mm -hmm. Be the best. Be the best. Master it. Be on time. Be punctual. Be the best. Because eventually, God is going to send you keys. Mm -hmm. And here's another little thing I learned in my little 31 years in this life. <laughs> just, just a little 31. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's another thing I learned. People are looking for... Let's, I'll use an example. Uh, in my case, with my movie, mm -hmm. I met a lot of celebrities. And I was thinking, wow, I'm waiting for one of these celebrities to give me a shot. Mm -hmm. I wait, I'm just waiting. Mm -hmm. But it didn't come that way. Mm -hmm. You know who's going to help you? Mm -hmm. The person that you least suspect, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. God has already introduced you to that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be patient. You have to stand still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the person that helped me, I never even thought... <laughs> I never right. even thought of. Mm -hmm. But God sent this person, and, it, and, and to the listening audience, and to people, and people who are listening, it is somebody that you already met. Mm -hmm. It don't take a ton of, it don't take 10, it don't take 20 people. Oh, it could be one, one person, person. Mm -hmm. that has every contact that you need. Mm -hmm. That one person for me was a great friend of mine. He said, you know what? Let's do a movie. I got the money. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking over right, in right, Hollywood. Right, right. God, right across the street from <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I and, and I and I um I went for that moment and mm -hmm. this is where we are, iniquity. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this and this project we started, oh my God, if I it was so many struggles. I was thinking, I was working on one project. The young, uh, the young lady that plays uh, Bathsheba, mm -hmm. uh, her name is Cynthia uh Hauser Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. We were working on another movie and um we were trying to get funding for that. It was slow, slow, you know, funding can be mm -hmm. tedious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I met my friend, my friend said, let's do a movie. I said, okay. And I'm thinking, I'm going to do this little small movie with small budget. Mm -hmm. Go out waiting for that big, I'm waiting for that big movie to break because I right. got some, some main actors attached, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to practice on iniquity. Right. You know, I had this story, iniquity. I said, I'm going to practice on this movie. And I said, Cynthia, listen, I'm going to write this movie for you. And that's another thing. I really mo wrote the movie for the young lady because mm -hmm. um, she fit every part that I was looking for for that character Bathsheba and I wrote it for her in two weeks I said let's film this movie get it out there so we can just say we have something out there mm -hmm. God didn't want that that way okay God delayed some things and I and I was frustrated because I'm thinking I had I had somebody run off with my footage <laughs> wow. wow I had so many things God bless them anyway uh, but, God, but God had a different direction. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to put the movie out. As soon as we got done filming, I was going to try to put it out right away. God said, wait a minute, I'm doing something different. I said, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I learned because um, through my life and, and what God has brought me from, my bishop and, and pastor, they're, very, they're, like, they're like parents to me. Mm -hmm. And they kind of molded me in, in the gospel. And they, they always told me never to really force things, mm -hmm. to pray about it, mm -hmm. stand still, and just watch. Mm -hmm. Because God gives us three answers. He says yes, no, or wait. wait. Mm -hmm. He don't say maybe. There's no such thing as a maybe with God. Mm -hmm. And God was telling me to wait. Just wait. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, God. All right. More producers started calling me. Hey, you got a film. What you, let's, let's talk about that. 
all right, another producer from LA. I heard you doing this movie. I'm like, okay, you heard. So everybody came together. We revamped the movie we needed to do the way we needed to do it. And then all of a sudden, uh, a distributor called me and said, look, I like your movie. Let's put it out. And now it's nationwide tomorrow. Mm. Wow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tonight. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> tonight, tonight, yeah, you got it. Mm. But tomorrow well, goes God. nationwide. Mm -hmm. Isn't it praise amazing God. when you wait on the Lord? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And and it, you said so so much that is so key to people who are in ministry. That's mm -hmm. right. If they're uh, a music artist, mm -hmm. yes. If if they're whatever they do, that's right. You have to perfect the little things. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that God will be able to trust you. That's correct. And that's the whole thing about him being able to trust you. That's right. When he gives you that big opportunity. You said it. You said it. Oh my, my God. You said my, it. My, my, my. Ooh, you God said is it. setting somebody watching. Mm. He is setting you up. That's right. He's setting you up. So don't get discouraged. You, wow. you keep hearing that. Don't get discouraged. That's right. That's right. Because you, it, it's time for you to uh, just get on up. That's right. And let God use you. <laughs> That's right. Amen. I tell you. So um, now you said you wanted whatever you, ever you did mm -hmm. to impact and change lives. Yes. So one way that people can be impacted is to find out how to reach you how to Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, I am on the uh, social media. Uh, all of it, I bet. All of it, right? You just search Director Joshua Coates, okay. and everything pulls up about it, even in iniquity. I'm sure they saw it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, another thing I wanted to bring out about the film, do we have time? Mm -hmm. We've got okay. about two minutes. Okay, great. Another thing about the film, um, it's about choices, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're going to, I'm not a director that want to beat you over the head with a Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I like to show my audience and make it thought provoking. Okay. Make them say, wow, look themselves in the mirror mm -hmm. and say, wow, I, I need to change. So that's what iniquity is all about. Okay. That's why I direct these type of films. Hey, Amen. Oh. These types. You got a couple in the pipeline. Yeah, yes, we do. Yeah. Ah. A couple in the pipeline, a couple TV shows we're going to, you know, it's going to really help the, the, the community and the body of Christ worldwide. Okay. Amen. Okay. I'll talk about it if you have time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about iniquity. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 Amen. it's amazing to have um, your character, the way that you're so excited. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, and exactly. you're excited because God has blessed you. That's right. And God has brought me a long way. And God has taught way. me a lot. Mm. Amen. Amen. Teachable spirit. That's you right. got to have that. That's right. You got to right. have that to That's get right. to, 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 to want to reach someplace. That's right. That's Amen. Right. We got about 30 seconds left. Encourage somebody right quick. Stay with God. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it may sound like a cliche, mm -hmm. but stay with God because really, um, the farther you get in life, even in your career, mm -hmm. you're going to need God because you're going to run the different levels. There's different evil spirits, there's mm -hmm. different devils, mm -hmm. as they say. Mm -hmm. But stay with God mm -hmm. because God will always, if you let God order your steps, you mm -hmm. will always wind up in the right place. Mm -hmm. If not, you will be somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let him order your steps. Amen. I like that. If you let God order your steps. You'll have a movie. You'll all <laughs> <laughs> a movie will be out. <laughs> you'll, and you'll always end up in the right place. Amen. 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 Well, we thank you for coming yes. and joining us and sharing. Release tomorrow. Yes, March 26th. Worldwide. Nationwide. 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 No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I received that. Okay. Worldwide. Worldwide. All right. <laughs> Now, as long as there's the internet, it will be worldwide. That's right. <laughs> Iniquity. Yes. <laughs> We're going to uh, take you to the music set now with yes. Camise Lee singing, I Choose You. Amen. God chose each and every one of us. So in return, we choose him today. Amen. Yeah. 
Logging on to www.watc.tv. Click on the prayer link and leave us your prayer request and praise reports. Allow us to believe with you that God will meet every need in your life and allow us to celebrate with you for every victory that He brings to pass. Connect with us today. Don't forget again, please contact our prayer partners, our prayer counselors. They're there waiting for you to give Amen. us a call. If you want to find out anything about any of our previous guests, the number at the bottom of the screen, again, 770-300-9828 is the number to call. Amen, amen. We've been being blessed all night yes. by this amazing woman of God as she has rendered her gift unto the Lord and she's sharing it with us tonight. Amen. Please welcome Camise Lee. Amen. Praise God. How are you doing? Amen. Amen. I'm doing great. I'm doing well. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us all the way from B-Town, Baltimore, Maryland. Well, thank you for having me. Good, good. Thank you for having me. Talk to us. It got a new project out, and God has been blessing you. You've been doing a lot of things in, in your area. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what God is doing in this season. Well, I'm actually from Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and um, 
I released my first gospel project last year um, in July 2012, and um, I had a lot of hardships mm -hmm. before the project. Um, I um, lost my mother. I um, slipped on some ice, mm. broke my foot, dislocated my ankle, had a house fire, almost mm. lost everything. Um, in the process of being out of work, after I healed, I developed rheumatoid arthritis in all of my joints. So in, um, in that, I was out of work for another three months. And when I was released to go back to work, found out that I had no job. Mm -hmm. My job had been replaced. So it was, it was a struggle and it was a challenge to even complete the CD, not having the finances. Mm -hmm. uh, but God spoke to me and he said, I'm your biggest resource. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So I pressed my way. I kept my faith in the Lord and I was able to release my project. Mm -hmm. And um, um, in me going through these hardships, I was kind of living a worldly life, mm -hmm. um, singing in a, a band in different club settings. Mm -hmm. But God spoke to me and he said, not so. You can't do it one foot in and one mm -hmm. foot out. Mm -hmm. You have to surrender all. Mm -hmm. You have to surrender all unto me. So um, I surrendered all to the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it the right way in holiness. Yes. So I praise God for moving in my life from where he's brought me from to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just an, an awesome testimony. And if the Lord did it for me, he can mm. do it for someone else. Mm. Wow. That's something. Wow. God took you from the nightclub. Yes, he did. Mm, and brought you before his people. Yes. To minister life and change yes. to them. Amen. Amen. How can we find out about uh, your CD? How can people find out more about you? If they're looking to book you or things of that nature, where, where can they go for that? I have a website. Mm -hmm. It's camisesongbirdlee.com. And I also have the social networking. I have a Twitter page. It's Songbird Camise. And also I have a Facebook page as well under Camise Lee and under um, Camise Songbird Lee. All right. Wow. Amen. Well, I, I'm glad that God set you free. Yes, I'm, I'm glad grateful. That, I'm glad and that thankful. he did whatever he had to do to just bring you right on to where you're supposed to be yes, in him, Lord. giving him the glory. Amen. Giving him the praise and the honor. And um, also, just want to mention if um, others want to purchase the CD, the CD is available on all your online stores. Okay. Uh, CD Baby, Rhapsody, Amazon, iTunes, and the name of the project is called I Choose You. I like Choose Amen. Good choice. Good Amen. choice. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Bible well, says that God chose each and every one of us, you know, even with all our shortcomings. Amen. And in return, I'm so proud to say that I choose him today. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for choosing us right here. Don't forget, we're always here. We're educational. Inspirational. And we are community. God bless. <laughs>
Well, we're back. My man. Again, we're back. We're here. Amen. Coming into your living rooms. Excited about this hour and being with you this evening again. I'm James Howard. And I'm Regina Howard. And we're of a Sound Voice Ministries. And what we want you to do is we still want you to tweet, tweet and Facebook and tell everybody to tune in. And if you've got some uh, girlfriends, then I want you to especially tell them to tune in because we've got an amazing woman of God that is going to deposit into your life and I believe it will bless you. You can tweet us right here at Atlanta Live 57 or visit us here on Facebook as well. Amen. This is at the bottom of your screen so join us and tweet that you're watching the show. Let us know that you're tuning in. Amen. We're going to take you right now to the music set with Desiree Bonner singing more. Father, we just bless your holy name. We give you praise, glory, and honor for all that you have already done and all that you're going to do. Lord God, we bless your name because you are God and you are God all by yourself. And we thank you, Lord God, that, Father, you have set this day in motion even before the foundations of the earth. So, Lord God, as we decrease... We pray that you increase within us. We want more of you.
less of me, less of me, and more of you. Glory to your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Desiree Bonner. Amen. More of you. We all need more of him. Yes. Um, yes. We, we need him. Um, the song says, I need thee every hour. Mm. And actually, it's every second, every minute, <laughs> every hour, every day, every week, every month. We need him. That's your favorite song. We can't make it without him. Amen. Amen. Our, our, our next guest is, uh, is an extraordinary woman of God. And Amen. She brings a lot of of knowledge uh, as a former educator in the public schools. Um, she has her doctorate um, in, in education. But God called her and, and had, God did, just did a remarkable thing when he called her to the ministry to help out her husband. Um, right now, she and her husband are co-pastors at the Shalom Church International. I really want to get to her because she has so much to say. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Dr. Sylvia Carter. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Amen. Dr. I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank We're you. glad yes. you're here. And, and, and we know that God has something for you oh, yes. to share um, not with the body of Christ, but also with women. Mm. Right. He's, uh, he's called you to, to deposit and to share and to feed and, and build them up. Right. So tell us a little bit about uh, Dr. Sylvia Carter, and then we're going to go into no wasted tears. All right, all amen, right. Amen, amen. My story is, is probably no different from any other woman's mm -hmm. story. I, um, as I told you earlier, I grew up in a military family. Mm -hmm. We moved a lot. Um, my father was uh, stationed in many different places, and so I had to learn how to be um, vocal, mm -hmm. um, defend my brothers and sisters, and so I was kind of the oldest, but in, in a lot of ways, I did not always act that way because I was kind of shy on the shy side, and so um, I grew up just like any other young lady. Uh, the Lord uh, led me to go to college, and I was the first in my family to go to college, and um, first I went for a marketing degree, because I thought I could sell anything mm. and do anything and <laughs> got out of that and uh, right after right out of college right out of college maybe a week after I got out of college I got saved and mm. on a Friday night I'll never forget it changed my life and you know because when you're young you think I'm gonna get out of college mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have my condominium you know mm -hmm. I said you know I'm gonna have me a fine football player you know I'm gonna get me a condominium <laughs> and I'm gonna shack and then the Lord changed my whole life in one Friday night mm. and went to the altar and surrendered and gave myself to the Lord and from there God took over and everything in my past changed because at that moment I realized I was no longer the same mm -hmm. Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Everything that I was so interested in before, it just changed. Mm -hmm. And so um, going on that journey, because you know, being in ministry and in the church, you, as women, we have different struggles. Mm -hmm. That the singleness, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's always um, sexual. I think mm -hmm. sometimes we want to feel like we belong. Mm -hmm. We want to know somebody loves us. Mm -hmm. And so I went on that journey and I, I did the marketing thing for a while, met my husband, and he courted me and wooed me. And I stood on, on Romans, brother, and I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Amen. holy and acceptable unto God, which, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. service. You're not getting any cookie right here. I stood on that. Amen. And so, you know, and, 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 and we eventually we were married. And, and then I went through a whole nother transition. <laughs> <laughs> because after I got that marketing degree, got married, and the Lord took me back to school so that I could go into education. After I got my education degree and started speaking, I remember driving by the school that I wanted to teach in. I spoke it, told the Lord I want to work right there. Mm -hmm. Kept saying it because you got to speak those things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to see it come to pass yes, in your life. Yes. God gave me that school. I went, to, I went there. I began to teach there. Then I had another desire to do more. I felt like this is where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I, I then went back to get my master's mm -hmm. in early childhood education. Then I wanted to get 
leadership and all of those other things that you just, you know, just think that that's the thing that you need to really fulfill you. Mm -hmm. And in all that time, I was really searching for Sylvia, mm -hmm. just trying to find where I fit in, you know, because at first I didn't know where I belonged in the ministry. I knew I was a pastor's wife, but mm -hmm. I didn't line up like all the other pastor's wives. I didn't believe in wearing the hats and I didn't want to sit down on the first row and I just didn't want to do those things. And when I found myself and fell in love with me, I began to understand where God wanted me. Mm -hmm. And then I really began to have a heart for women mm -hmm. because in churches, so many women hurt. Mm -hmm. Wow. They're hurting. We have so many hurting pastors' wives. We go through our own struggles because we're trying to identify who we are. We know we're in a partnership with our husband mm -hmm. and we don't mind being in partnership because my thing is to undergird my husband. Mm -hmm. I want him to be the best pastor that he can be. Mm -hmm. I want God to take him before the people. I want to pray for him. It doesn't bother me to get up at six and at three o'clock at night and to lay my hands on him and pray that God does what he wants to do for him. Mm -hmm. But in that, I can't lose myself. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you got to find yourself. So. As you said, I, I, I gave up. I, he asked me to come work with him in ministry. I just got my doctorate degree. And in 2005, he said, I want you to come and work with me at the church. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do when I got there because all I'd ever done was work with children. So what am I going to do in ministry? So I began to develop programs and start little different things in the ministries that could mm -hmm. help and benefit our ministry because we, at that time, we had transitioned. And so it was new for us. We're in a new location. And I began to do all of those things, but still I was lost. I still didn't know what it was, where is my place. Mm -hmm. And then I really began to open up in my women's fellowship. Mm. And I began to see the faces of women. And I began to hear the story of mm. women. And as I began to hear their stories, I heard my story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in ministry, when you are a pastor's wife, you're going you're gonna to deal with different trials and different, mm -hmm. different tribulations. And James tells us that. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and James, he, and he tells us, you're going you're gonna to have tribulations mm -hmm. in this life. Mm -hmm. And when you do have those tribulations, you've got to be able to know that there is a place that you can go. Mm -hmm. I can't go and give everything mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. everybody Mm -hmm. Not in the congregation, not wow. in the church, mm -hmm. because they're looking to me mm -hmm. to be that person that they need to look mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. But in the whole time, you may be hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're lifting them up. You're a pastor's wife, but you are hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. But I've learned even in that, that loving them was killing me. Mm. Wow. Everything in me was dying. Mm. Everything mm. in me was breaking down. Everything mm. in me seemed like it was going to hell in a handbasket, mm -hmm. as they would say. But God was building me up so that I could speak life to women, to mm -hmm. let them know that you don't have to be defeated by the mm -hmm. things that you're going through, mm -hmm. and that God loves you, yeah. and that you can go through and you can survive anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I, 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 I always want to tell women, especially married women, that mm -hmm. you don't have to give up on a marriage just mm -hmm. because you have a downside, wow. mm -hmm. just because somebody messed up in mm -hmm. that. It doesn't make you weak mm -hmm. because you stay with a man. Mm -hmm. God, God was the one who's established marriage. He yeah. said marriage was good. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have established it if it wasn't. <laughs> he had the first marriage mm -hmm. in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. It was the very first marriage. Mm -hmm. And any marriage can go through something. Everybody's marriage can have some ups and some downs. Mm -hmm. You can have a marriage on the rocks, mm -hmm. but then you can have a marriage on the rock. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, sister. The you rock. can have it. Wow. The rock. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. rock. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to identify and make sure that you know that God has called you mm -hmm. to where you are. Mm -hmm. And see, that's the one thing that I've always known, mm -hmm. that in my life, I didn't wait this long to get married for the enemy to take, take it, from it from me. me. Mm -hmm. You better say that. Come Amen. on now. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I will fight to the death. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, you know, and that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. But to the, with the enemy, you mm -hmm. have to let him know, you know. I'm not, I'm not going out like this. Amen. I'm not. We're going to come back because we, we're going to get into <laughs> No Wasted Tears, but we're going to take you right now back to the music set yeah. with Desiree Bonner singing Amazing Grace.
once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Amazing Grace by Desiree Bonner, blessing us this half. And uh, we've been blessed, I've been blessed by Dr. Sylvia Carter. She's joining us, talking to her about her ministry, her life, where God has brought her from to, and her new book, No Wasted Tears. Mm, Dr. No wasted Carter, tears. Yes. let's get back to it. No Wasted Tears, <laughs> I'm telling you. So how did this come about? That's my baby. It, okay. it, it started out... It, about, I would say, six years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it was not entitled No Wasted Tears. It started off as, excuse me, you're blocking my view. Mm -hmm. And um, it was going to be a self-help book. Okay. And, but at that time, I was so bitter, and I was mm -hmm. hurt, and I was disappointed, and it was coming out in my words. And the Lord had to stop me from writing at that point. And um, mm -hmm. I picked it back up again. And uh, because sometimes you got to heal, you got to mm. go through a healing process before you can really begin to uh, minister to somebody. Yeah. And so when I picked it back up, um, uh, my best friend, my husband, he um, told me, "You gotta, you gotta finish what you started. Mm. You know, come on, get get to writing again." And I picked it back up, and the Lord gave me uh, no wasted tears, and the the things that I was going to use to help uh, someone with 
they became stories. Mm -hmm. And I put them all together mm -hmm. and I ended up with the story of four different women that have, um, con that connect with each other mm -hmm. and inspire each other to want to be better so that they can transform mm -hmm. their lives. Mm -hmm. And it just, it began to unfold and God gave it to me and then No Wasted Tears came about. Um, through that journey, in six years, I say that I, it was conceived in bitterness, but mm. it was delivered in forgiveness. Mm. And so when I got all of that out of me, God uh, answered my <laughs> prayer and I was able to finish my book. And wow. it's no wasted tears in God. And you know what the scripture says mm. in Psalms 126 and 5? Amen. They that sow in tears, tears shall, reap shall reap in, in joy. joy. In joy. And um, my husband has been my biggest supporter. I mean, he's been mm. my cheerleader, just pushing me all the way through it. You know, not when I, on the times when I wanted to put it down, mm -hmm. you know, he was there and told me, pick it back up. My mm -hmm. son and my daughter, they've really just been a blessing with that story. And um, uh, the thing that really blesses me in it, and I think it's, it, it, it would help all women mm -hmm. because every woman in there has a different story mm -hmm. or a different issue. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming from broken homes, mm -hmm. homes without a mother or a father. Mm -hmm. They've been through some type of abuse, mm -hmm. but they find God mm -hmm. and they know they end up knowing that he's their peace. He's mm -hmm. their source. They cast all their cares upon him mm -hmm. and he gives them a renewing. And so it's been a blessing. God said, you know, and you know, and how about write the vision, mm -hmm. make it plain. Make it plain. Mm -hmm. And if you make it plain, people will understand it. You know, mm -hmm. they don't need anything hard or difficult. No. Mm -hmm to get, get what God wants them, to get salvation, mm -hmm. to understand what it is and mm -hmm. how precious it is. And so No Wasted Tears is that journey of four women, but they end up victorious. Amen. Amen. And Amen. So I'm excited about it. Well, I, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's something about what is, it's something you've carried. Oh, yes. And, and, I, and I just have to tell you that if... Um, this story of ours of writing does not sound the same oh, when it comes God. to our husbands. Yes. Pick it up. Mm -hmm. How are you going to start something and don't finish it? That's right. And I mean, he's did you pick it up? Have you written today? That's right. You know, did you, you know, so he's, he started again because I'm in the midst of another project, but it's amazing that how God sets you up right. to bless someone else. Exactly. It doesn't look good at first. It doesn't. But the outcome is, and you said it, mm -hmm. said, that's my baby. That's my baby. Because you went there. That's right. God took you there. That's right. But now you're going to take somebody else there and help them discover and who they are. That's mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. God saw me when I was polluted in my own junk. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. pulled me up out of that. Mm -hmm. And he didn't pull me up out of that so that I could sit on it. Because mm -hmm. I believe our life. See, the thing in churches that we don't have enough of is mm -hmm. transparency. Mm -hmm. Whatever I've gone through, I believe I've gone through it so that somebody else can know that mm -hmm. they can survive it. Mm -hmm. That God can get you through anything. Mm -hmm. But we don't have enough transparency. Everybody wants to put on this facade mm -hmm. and act like they're perfect and mm -hmm. got it all together and, and wearing the St. John's and having mm -hmm. on the Christian Louboutins that's mm -hmm. killing their toes. Right. But mm -hmm. they're trying to keep that image and they don't mm -hmm. want, they want to come into church and they want to look pretty and like the princess. But I, there, there are times when you come in, you don't feel pretty mm -hmm. and you don't, and you, it, you you may look good on the outside, but you're messed up on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so if we have more transparency, mm -hmm. I think we'll have more women who are delivered mm -hmm. to know wow. that I may be in a place where I hurt, but she's showing me that I can be victorious, mm -hmm. even in the place that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not saying that you won't hurt. You will hurt. You hurt. Mm -hmm. Because in this life, you, you're going to mm -hmm. hurt. You're going to go through some ups and downs. Yeah. But if you look to the hills, mm -hmm. from which comes Come all of your help, mm -hmm. your help can come, come from the Lord. Yes, it is. It, he'll give you joy every time. Yes, he will. He'll put clapping in your hands yes, and will. in your feet. I yes, mean, he will. And before you know it, your whole life is changed around. around. Yes, it is. The very thing that you thought, the yeah. very thing that you thought was going to destroy Take you. Out. you yes. It's the thing that takes you to, to the next level in God. Look yes, at that book I'm right there. I birthed a baby. Come on now. Amen now. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Only because I know it, it, it was some hard labor pains yeah. in there. Yeah. But God did. Let me tell you something. The thing that really blessed me about this whole thing is when I had my baby, my, my first child, Thedra, I had some problems in her pregnancy, in my pregnancy with her. But when I had my baby, my son, Jonathan, Jonathan was born DOA. No life was in mm. him at all. But Jonathan, with no life in him, 
And in all this time, I stayed on my knees praying for my baby the whole time. Where the doctor said he wasn't going to do this. He didn't read until he was in about the third grade. He didn't, he, he wasn't able to sit in the seat. Teachers wanted to put him on Ritalin. And, mm -hmm. and I told them, my husband told them, no, you get on Ritalin so you can understand how to teach him the right way. But that <laughs> same God. baby put him on that was DOA when he was born mm -hmm. walked into the house one day after school in, in the two years ago, walked in the house when his mama was sitting on the couch going through. Mm -hmm. He looked at me. That child spoke life mm. back into me. Mm -hmm. Where's your book and why aren't you writing? Mm -hmm. When he said that to me, that thing hit me in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? He doesn't even know he's a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. he, a, a child that was born dead is definitely able to speak life to mm -hmm. somebody else. Mm -hmm. So he's going to speak a lot of life because he spoke life into his mama and the baby came to pass. Mm -hmm. So I know that somebody's life is going to be changed Amen. through no wasted tears. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, you can cry. But all crying does is get it out of you. Mm -hmm. All crying does is release purging. it out. Yeah. Yeah, a purging, mm -hmm. a cleansing. Mm -hmm. And it's good. But every tear that you cry, the it's Bible says God takes it back in a bottle, bottle. bottles them mm -hmm. up. And he looks at every tear that you cried, mm -hmm. and he examines them, lets you know everything is going to be all right. Yeah. So every tear you cry in God, none of them are wasted. No I don't wasted. care what it looks like. It's not wasted in mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You better know victory is coming. Ooh, it's on the way. You better, you better As know a matter of fact, it's here. That's right, right now. You got to catch up with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You there just you got to go. catch up to you your just, victory. See, you got mm -hmm. it. That's mm -hmm. it, and that's exactly. And that's all we need to do so that we can encourage one another. Instead mm -hmm. of pulling each other down, yeah, mm -hmm. build each other. Mm -hmm. we need to build mm -hmm. each other up. Mm -hmm. Instead of coveting what somebody else has. Yes. Wow. yes. Now you saying the word. That's yes. What, we, we don't need to do that. We yes. need to fall in love with self. Mm -hmm. And when you fall in love with yourself, then you're able to love somebody else. Because mm -hmm. love can't love on its own. It's got to go through a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's got to be shown through somebody. Mm -hmm. But if I can walk love and talk love mm -hmm. and act love, mm -hmm. then somebody else will know love is real. And, one, and love is not what you see on the outside. One thing that's for sure is that when you fall in love with God, Mm. He'll reveal to you who you are and the you that you've never loved before, the you that you hated or despised. That's right. God will teach you how to love yourself. Quickly, okay. tell everybody, we've got about 30 seconds, okay. how they can, where they can find it. Are you on social media? How they can reach out to okay. you? Okay. On tomorrow, it, it's, it's national release date, and they can find it on um, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, mm -hmm. Christian Books, um, um, Christian Books, Dot com, com. Mm -hmm. also, and they can get it there. They also can go to www.sylviacarter.tateauthor.com. Okay. Or they can go to my Twitter, which is at Sylvia D. Carter, or my Facebook page, which is Sylvia's Divine Collections. And they can get the information and order the book so that their lives can be changed. Amen. 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 Dr. Carter, thank you so thank much you for so coming much and for talking about No Wasted Tears. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We're going to take you back to the music set with Desiree singing, You're My Everything. Mm.
I know you can do anything. You're the love of my life, the very beat of my heart. Oh, Lord, I know you can do anything. And I At the office, on the go, day or night, you can connect with our prayer partners by logging on to www.watc.tv. Click on the prayer link and leave us your prayer requests and praise reports. Allow us to believe with you that God will meet every need in your life and allow us to celebrate with you for every victory that he brings to pass. Connect with us today. Amen. That was uh, Desiree Bonner singing, You're My Everything. And he, that is truly what God needs to be, is our everything. I'm sorry, it can't be your husband. Mm -hmm. It can't be your job, your career. Mm -hmm. It can't even be your ministry. God has to be your everything. Because if he's not, there's no telling where you'll end up. Amen. Amen. Give it to him and let him be your all. And joining us now to talk about her new CD and what God is doing in her life. Uh, the CD is entitled The Psalmist. Please welcome Desiree Bonner, Bonner. with us. Amen. Thank you God for joining bless us. You. God bless you. Thank you for coming yes. and singing and blessing us. And Okay, the CD's out. Volume 2. Volume 2. Volume 2. Yes, sir. Talk Amen. Talk about what's going on with Desiree. Well, many years ago, I've been writing songs for a very long time. And I would just write them and put them in drawers because they're just something I did to, you know, give to God. Mm -hmm. And I would just sing them on my own. Or I would, in church, I might pop out one, you know, every now mm -hmm. and then. And then what was starting to happen was people were asking me, who sings that song? And I would say, I sing it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who sings the song? <laughs> like, no, it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> I wrote it. So what started happening was the Lord put in my heart that I needed to just start recording them mm -hmm. and getting them into people's hands so mm -hmm. they can minister to them outside of the church. Wow. Amen. Amen. Simple. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Simple, simple mm -hmm. put. Yeah. Nothing hard about that. Yeah. Amen. And and so you said you've been singing for years, mm -hmm. and and you you put it together, the Psalmist Volume Two. So, what has God done in you, mm -hmm. with you releasing what He's given to you t to others? Actually, what it's done is it's opened me up mm -hmm. to receive more, mm -hmm. so that I can give out more, mm -hmm. because the vessel itself now has emptied itself mm -hmm. of what was sitting in there mm -hmm. because it had been sitting for so long right. and I hadn't, there was no outlet for it. Okay. No true outlet for it. Mm -hmm. And so when you give out, what happens is now you have room to receive more mm -hmm. so that you can now give out more. Mm -hmm. So this is volume two. I released volume one in 2011 and so now I'm mm -hmm. really get ready for volume three. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Already already got volume three stirring yes. up. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. But that's yes. how he is. Yes. That's how he is. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are you the type of songwriter that writes a bunch of songs and you probably have maybe about 20 or 30 songs mm -hmm. already ready in the yeah. draw just to pick out? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and of course, um, dreaming and mm -hmm. you'll wake up and you'll start writing mm -hmm. and start singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm one of those kind that, that when I wake up and the Lord has given me a song, he gives me a song in full. Mm -hmm. And so I actually don't even try to open my eyes. <laughs> I just reach over, get the recorder uh -huh. in my gravelly voice, <laughs> and just right. put it on there so that I can record it, and otherwise I'll lose it. If mm -hmm. I try to get up, get ready for the day, go on about my business, mm -hmm. if I haven't written the vision down and made it plain, mm -hmm. I'll lose it. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the kind that has to have that little pencil mm -hmm. and notebook. Oh, and if you go to bed without it, yes. you're just like, mm, what happened? Exactly. Yeah, so, but um, <laughs> the... Um, the psalmist mm -hmm. is um, how can viewers, listeners, everybody find out more about the music, you, social media, anything? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, it's a social media world, isn't it? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely on Twitter, on Reverb Nation, um, and, and definitely Facebook. But you can go straight to my website, okay. dhbonner.com, mm -hmm. and it has all the links to everything. To wow. everything, okay. What do you want people to get from? Volume yeah. one, two, and three. Right. For me, it's it's not so much about record sales. Mm -hmm. okay. For me, it's about being able to hand you something that when you're listening to it, now you can create an environment where you are, mm -hmm. where you can sense the very presence of God, God. Mm -hmm. and you can worship Him and mm -hmm. have a relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. She says it's not about the sales. It's not. It's really not. It's about the souls. It's about the it's souls. It's not about sales, the souls. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. That's mm -hmm. my heart. That, Amen. that to create an environment where they can actually sense the very presence of God and now they can go beyond the outer court mm -hmm. through the holy place mm -hmm. and right into the holiest of holies where the very presence of God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which oh, is a good place to be. It's the best place to be. Yeah. 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 The yeah. best place. Amen. Best place to be. Um, Quickly, how would you encourage someone that ha has a drawer full of songs and they just sing them to themselves? Start singing them. Keep singing them to yourself, mm -hmm. but keep singing them to God and then put yourself, allow yourself to be in an environment where other people can witness it, mm -hmm. where other people can be in the presence with it. Mm -hmm. Because as you're singing and as you're worshiping, you're creating an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now they can begin to experience what you're already walking in. Amen. Desiree Bonner, thank you so thank much, you. So much for, for ministering and sharing with me. us tonight. We're grateful to God for that. God bless We're going to take you to the heartbeat of Atlanta Live now. We're going to take you back to the prayer room. Good evening. My name is Jackie Lance from the Love Center, where my anointed pastor is Pastor Byron L. Broussard. I'm standing here in TV 57 prayer room where we have anointed prayer warriors who are just waiting to pray with you. Whatever your situation may be, remember with God, nothing is impossible. And for those of you that need salvation, remember Romans 10, 9 and 10 reads, if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if you just stop right where you are and pray this simple prayer with me, Father, I know I'm a sinner, 
and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me, and God has raised Jesus from the dead. I want to turn from my sins, Jesus. Come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. Amen. And know if you've prayed that simple prayer with me, that you are saved. Call us here at TV 57. Again, that number is 770-300-9828, where we have anointed prayer warriors who are just pr waiting to pray with you, whatever the situation may be. And now, back to the studio. Welcome back and uh, excited to be with you. And uh, just to, to give you a little bit of something that God has placed in my heart this evening and, and God is doing so many things in, in our lives and I pray that he's doing something in your life that's totally different. Our, our guest tonight talked about uh, some of the things that I was going to bring. Uh, quickly, we're going to bring something very, very familiar into your hearing. Coming from Philippians, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, starting saying, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are very much considered in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is soon to come. And don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Then will you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Verse 8 states that, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. These about things are the excellence of worthy of praise. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into the practice all that you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, and then God will be at peace with you. And it's just amazing because uh, just to bring some words of encouragement to you this evening to talk about the passage in Philippians and what it can teach us about joy. Um, you know, the Apostle Paul was talking about what he learned and how he was able to be content in every situation. Now, just to give you a little story about him, this man, he wrote this while he was in prison who for over 30 years he had been mobbed, beaten, stoned, and violated so much, but yet he was overflowing with joy. And you know, the one thing that would naturally tend to make him mad and bitter only happened to be happiness that was added unto him. And you know, tonight, some of you may be going through the same situation that Paul has. And some type of prison you may be in, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally or mentally, you're in some sort of prison. But I'm here to tell you that you can have the same joy that Paul had if you just rejoice in the Lord always. You know, it may not be easy, but it will be simply amazing what Christ can do in your life if you just rejoice in him. So the question is, where are, to re, uh, where are we to rejoice? Are we to rejoice when we're happy or when we're sad, when we're grumpy, when the kids are getting on our nerves or when we're at church or when we're at work or home, when nothing is going our way or when everything is going our way? When is it that we are to rejoice? And why? Why do you think the Lord asks us always to rejoice in him? Where is our focus when we're praising God? You know, praising God turns our focus from our circumstances, which sometimes can seem impossible, to our God, with whom all things are 
possible. And just going through our daily lives, the challenges on how we're going to manage our finances, how we're going to manage our time, our patience, and even our anger causes us in one way or another to worry, to worry about something. Uh, Paul tells us not to worry about anything, but pray about everything. You know, do we really take the time to pray about everything or only when something is we just need something at that moment? We really must not let our petitions and our praises shape our worries into prayers, letting God know our word. We really have to do that because once we're able to tell God what we're seeking, what we're dealing with, as well as praising them through all, then he can address our concerns. When we constantly and consistently go to God in prayer, we must thank him for what he's done and what he's going to do. Then will you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we could possibly understand. You know, sometimes when you're going through a rough patch in your life, you're wondering where the peace is, where the joy is. That's what we're trying to just talk about a little bit today, about rejoicing in the Lord always. No matter what you're going through, there's a lot of times that you just get tired and you want to give up. But if you put your hand in God's hand and just trust him, he'll give you the peace that you're, you know, that you're really searching for. And I'm here to tell you that there is no better place to be within yourself. The things that used to get you upset, the things that used to get you angry, used to get mad, it just doesn't happen anymore when you're in peace with God, when you have joy, when you rejoice in him. You know, your worries of your finances, are so, uh, they're, they're not overwhelming as much anymore. You still may go through some financial issues, but with peace in God, you're able to effectively manage them and make, men, make all your ends meet. Uh, you know, sometimes we would sit down and we'll just do things on our own and we go through the life every day. Oh, I got to pay this, I got to pay this, I got to pay that. I got to do this, I got to do that. But we don't seek God in our direction. That's what he wants from us. Paul is talking about seeking him, praising him, rejoicing in him so that we can receive the peace and joy. You know, Matthew 7, 7 and 11 states that, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and that he seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask for a fish, will he be given a serpent? If ye then bring evil, know how to give good gifts unto children, how much shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Now, we do this daily, and God has so much in store for us, for us to be selfless, for us to give more of ourselves. That's one of the only ways that you can end up being at peace with yourself, having the joy that you are looking for in your daily lives. Look, I know it's not easy. And for me, I've been at a place to where I didn't know where I was going, what I was going to do. And I was trying to do everything for myself, thinking I knew enough of God, knew enough of what he placed inside of me that I can go on ahead and do it on my own. And then things started to fall apart. I wasn't managing my finances. I was struggling. Things just weren't working well. Uh, I was arguing with my wife for unnecessary things, not being the man that God called me to be because I just did not simply trust and obey his word by rejoicing and being in him always and rejoicing in the Lord always. Now, the one part of Philippians that really brings some very, very true and great meaning to me that I really, really like is when Paul instructs us to fix our thoughts on which is true and honorable 
and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Again, we have to ask ourselves the question, what if we really focused our thoughts on what all the scriptures are saying? If we just did what we had to do, we hardly wouldn't have any other time to think about anything that was ungodly if we just focus on what God will have for us to do. What the scriptures are telling us to do as far as seeking him. I know sometimes things happen, whether it's work-related, you might have issues with your car, you may have problems in your home, and you may even be depressed. But you can do and nothing about the problems that you have until you seek God. This is when we are really, really put to the test about our obedience in Christ. The question also is, how do our thoughts affect us? Well, for one, I've learned that when the things happen, that there will be a warning signal to stop. Stop where you are in your tracks, examine your thoughts, and then pray. We don't do that much. We get to the point where we start examining our own thoughts, making our own decisions, and then we don't seek God for direction. It's simple. Things have been going and you're sitting there looking and saying, you know what, I know I can handle this. But then you can't. When do you go to God? Only when you need something? But I'm here today to challenge you to seek him in everything that you do, no matter what it is. I really want you to know that God loves you if you just rejoice in him always. You know, Paul says, when we're able to keep putting into practice all the things learned and received from him, everything you heard from Paul and heard him say and doing, then will the peace of God be with you. And, and in today's time, we need peace and joy in our lives so that we won't lose our mind because there's so much going on, there's so much going on, back and forth it's overwhelming but to have peace and joy in Christ is just amazing to where you're able to just relax in him and just speak peace peace be still peace be still in your life so that you can have joy and you also really have to watch who is speaking to you who is putting things into your life what are you hearing the company that you keep will all affect your thoughts and decisions that you would make in our lives. I know it wasn't much, but I really hope something that I said or that what was said will help you to attain joy and peace in your life. You know, I, I would really like to, to pray, and this prayer I want you to say with me, I want you to say that, Lord, I love you and you are the God of all creation, and yet you're concerned with every detail of my life. I thank you for being my father. I confess that at times I am frustrated, and rejoicing you is something I don't really feel like doing. I have a lot of things going on. My finances are really tight this month, but your word says to rejoice in the Lord always. So because I love you, God, I choose to obey you rather than my own feelings. I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for my family, my job, and knowing that you are my provider. Again, I just want to say thank you. Thank you that you're sovereign and that everything is under your control. Not mine, but your control. Thank you that you've promised to work things out for good. And I thank you that you are helping me become the person that you've created in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as much as we go through things, we've heard our guests tonight talk about joy, peace, and what God has done in their lives. God has done remarkable things in my life. And I'm here to tell you I wouldn't be standing here if it had not been 
for the grace of God. Through everything that I've been through, even when I didn't know where I was going, when I lost my parents back to back and thought about ending everything, taking my life, God was still there to pull me out of my mess so that I can continue to rejoice in him, to say thank you, God. In you, I love you. I will rejoice always in you. And I'm here to challenge you today to say that if you rejoice in the Lord always, he will make your path easy. He will make what you're doing a little bit more bearable. Remember, God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. He's testing you to see how you're going to come out. If you would just trust and obey. The song says there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Atlanta Live. We thank you so very much. Don't forget to call the number at the bottom of the screen, 770-300-9828 is the number to call. You can continue to call as the show ends. Don't forget right here, we love you so very much. We are inspirational, we are educational, and we are a community. God bless you, and good night.